keep up with, with what's going on with the cars. A lot of people, you know, they're busy at home, working around the house and that sort of thing. They can't get to the track, and it's a way of them keeping up with what's going on. The big question is, who is going to get a handbag for their Valentine's Day? Well, that was a, a story from earlier in the weekend. But Andy Knight, the man closest to you in the 50, all red, has a chance to win here. And he's had the better of Angus Fogg off the start. Handicap or no handicap, he's got the better of Fogg from the start line. And Fogg a bit probably shy from uh, getting penalised at Hampton Downs for a bit too quick a start. And now they get to do it all again. But this time it's the fastest at the front. So we'll have a proper race and we should see some group racing. I'll get Ian to keep me honest with what's going on with the other groups. And they go to a brilliant start from Fogg. Oh, Angus Fogg really held it off line there. He just seemed to time that perfectly. Andy Knight will slot into second place. And it's a three-way tussle for the corner as they go through Toyota for the first time. A nice clean start from everyone. Oh, Hanson's had a spin. A, whoa, I say that. We've got a spin. <laughs> It's the 81. He was he was last year's um, championship winner, so you know he was obviously going a little bit hard to try and to tr try and get some valuable points. So now he's got to chase through the pack to get up towards the pointy end again. You know, and I just said that Dean Hansen had had a good weekend, and he had up to now. So he's had a spin, and I think he was on his own. But Fogg trying to extend that lead, and Knight's going with him. Third place is Andrew Porter. Hansen's dropped out of fourth, obviously after that spin. Craig Booth is right there. Let's have another look. Oh, yeah. He just got on. To, yeah, he was... Uh, yeah, I think he may have had a tap as well, but uh, he got the power down while his rear left was just on the sticky grass, and it spun him. And here comes Andy Knight. Look at the speed of Andy Knight down the front straight, but Fogg holds him off. And into Toyota they go again. These two have been at each other's throats all weekend long in the best way possible. Good, clean fighting between them. But Andy Knight yet to get the better of Foggy on a one-on-one -on -one battle anyway. He certainly used the traffic in the handicap race to take that third yesterday. Clark Hopkins is and coming into the pits. And now they are really... Ah. Well, I hope it's not his arm that's hurting. I can't believe he raced with, with a broken arm, but never mind. He still won. Yeah, apparently he fell off a roof. He's uh, he's in the roofing industry, and, yeah, obviously he was out working on a on a roof and fell off and broke his arm, so, but he's still coming out racing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a story there somewhere. Back over the oil they go, and still fog and night. We had a foggy morning, but we don't want a foggy night. J.A. Russell Limited. That's the sponsor for Angus Fogg as they cross the line again. Fogg did a 110.2, a 110.4 from Knight. There's nothing between them, though. And these two pulling away now by over two seconds from the rest of the field. And I think it's going to be a two-way battle. And then we'll settle down for some good battles for the overall podium. Greg Booth up there at the moment. Andrew Porter, fourth. We heard from him. Matt Spratt having a good run. He's up to fifth. Michael Wallace, who needs the points, is six. Can you give me an update on the points, Ian? Has it changed dramatically from what I what I got from this morning? Well, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say whether it's changed dramatically. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, the, the guys themselves work out the points. I actually send it off to a guy, Andrew Ty Turner, who actually races with us, and he does all the points. So I'm not 100% sure where they're all sitting and situated as far as that. Or like by the end of end of the week, I'll know exactly where they're sitting. I'll get a printout, and um, until I get that, I don't know. I mean, I. I can't work out the points and tell you exactly where they are, but they sort of, they work it well, out I themselves. Understand, I, I understand that. I understand that because in line with the rules of everything being, you know, of state of the order, a state of the art, you have to have a computer from the 70s. So that makes things hard when you're trying to use the calculator because I don't think even calculators were born before no, that. Definitely so, no, yeah, definitely not. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And you, also, you're working it all out on the abacus, Mr. Turner, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And um, the other thing, too, is that if they have any contact or anything like that, they lose points for that as well. So if they throw a contact in there or, a, like I said, with McKelvey, he had a breakout, so he could be working out the points off that, but he's actually got a breakout that's going to put him back a few spots in the, in the finishing order of the last race. 
You know what's interesting to go with seven laps to go. If these guys stay on this kind of pace, they could easily catch some of the back markers. And although it's not a handicap race, it could change the complexion of this because they are glued together. Andy Knight with the lights flashing as he has been uh, all weekend long, or at least on, is desperately trying to take the number 11. And it looks as though Dean Hansen's got back and going and now he's uh, siding his way through. So there's no damage to the car, I'm glad to say. Yes, yes, he's um, coming up on Bruce Kess, who's currently sitting ninth. So he's got from 19th back up to ninth again. So he's sort of carving his way through the field, trying to get some valuable points. <laughs> he's got to be careful, though. Yeah. He's pushing too hard out of Higgins. Look at him sliding that way. A little bit of drifting there. Not frightened to go over the oil patch, but it's drying up now. And uh, now he goes round the outside at the last corner. And he'll try and slingshot himself round, and he does just that. Uh, nicely done. Good brave manoeuvre that at the last corner here at Manfield. Ah, it sounds glorious, doesn't it? Drop the fly and makes up another spot. Rick Van Sweat is going okay at the moment. The man who went off last time out in the 67, he's still there. There's the chickadee number two car of Andy Sinclair. Sinclair down in 13th at the moment as we go back to the leaders. And Angus Fogg doing the business and holding on. But Andy Knight has been looking for a chance to have a proper race with Angus Fogg for the last two rounds, and now he's got it. And I think these two are going to be glued together. Who's your money on, Ian? Oh, Whoa. It's, it's either, it's either going to be Foggy or Knight, I would think. Um, that's um, Tony Boyden, who just had a spin. Um, he'll get back on the track, though, I'd say. He's still running. So, oh, and Andy Knight's... Uh, oh, no! Oh. Knight! Obviously pushing too hard and tyres have gone off and he's gone off. Well, his day was going good, but then it all went horribly wrong. Let's have a look. Oh, well, he's had a bit of a tap there by the looks well, of it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, got a tap from the 65, no doubt about it. Shane Johnson turned him round at the uh, hairpin. And I wonder what happened to our man, Andy Knight. Well, they're watching on, on the sidelines. Looking concerned as well they might be. But that has just played perfect for Angus Fogg. Because now he can relax a little bit. His last lap a 109.5. So he's on the pace, up the pace even. And as you can see, he's not sliding down, even though he's not under pressure. But that's a real shame for Andy Knight. I was really hoping that uh, he'd take this to him. He's got back going again. Uh, but he's got a lot of work to do. And he's now going to have to do exactly what a couple of the others have done, which is try to slide his way back. But uh, in terms of attacking Fogg, I think that game is over, though. He could get some points here. And these are going to be important points for Knight because in the last three races, he's put himself in contention. And so this will be a big, big problem uh, if he's not going to get decent points out of this one. So he's going to be pushing on in, I think. Yeah, yeah I think I think Foggy might have this round you know, in the bag, basically, if he if he finishes and finishes this race and wins, they were very very close. You know, even in the qualifying, we used some points from qualifying as well, and where they qualify, Knight's been up up in the reverse grid. He's been been in front of Foggy in one race by two cars, back behind in the the next one. So it's it's very very close between the two. Talking of close between the two, look at this then, Boot and Porter. Great Port Boot in second place, just ahead of Andrew Porter in the number three. Yeah, Andrew and behind Porter. Behind them, Matt Spratt. Yeah, Andrew Porter's sort of come to this class this year. He's just got, got that car going, so he's he sort of fitted into it quite well, and he's up the pointy end and that sort of thing. He bought that was an ex car from somebody else that sort of got out of racing. He's picked up that car. He's out there, but he's come from truck racing and um, Porsche racing as well, so, you know, he, he still knows how to pedal a car pretty well. Yep, that's an interesting combination to go from Porsche to truck racing. But that feels a bit different. Yeah, definitely. And Matt Spratt's doing really well as well. I mean, he's he's come into this class just this year in, in a car. At, and um, he's also racing in the Ute series, you know, which is more of a contact series than this. Yes, exactly. Uh, we look at the 26 of Matt Spratt, the man you just mentioned. I do like the look of that car. It's boxy, but I, it, it's pretty too. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he loves the car and he doesn't want to damage it. 
he's, he's looking after it and yeah he's uh he treats it like his pride and joy like they should do all of them treat them like pride and joy absolutely absolutely well currently running in fourth position and if this battle between Porter and Boo heats up in the closing stages with three to go he may have a chance at a podium that's what he's thinking right now that's for sure he's pushing on his best lap so far 111 8 and that is pretty much on the same form or same pace as the two men in front of him and here are those two men and they've been glued together for the last few laps and they come across the line it'll be two to go after this fog out front by 10 seconds to this battle between boot and porter yes he met into turn one matt's got to keep his eye on the, the guy behind him now um andy knight he's coming up on him pretty quickly so there'll be a bit of a you know a bit of a race on there as well to um, get some valuable points yeah, and Andy Knight's done exactly what I thought he might do, which is to try to side his way through and, and, and basically salvage the points. And he has got a good chance of catching Matt Spratt and putting himself in a close enough, there he is, close enough position to maybe challenge on the last lap for the podium. But that would be miraculous if he gets past both of these two. Anyway, down they, the back straight they come. And now you can see it playing out. Second, third, fourth and fifth place. Andy Knight with the lights on still. Knight in fifth as they dive into Higgins. Two to go, less than now. Real shame to see Knight get turned around or got or, or turned around himself because he was going so well up until that point. But he's flying now and he's all over the back of Spratt. And Spratt's holding on, but uh, I think it's a matter of time. And sure enough, Andy Knight will cross past him as he crosses the line and does so he's up to fourth now and he can see the two in front of him ahead of him will he have time here to catch him i don't know last lap, last lap board's just come out so you know it's um you know they only got this lap to go to to, to get to get up there and do it so we'll see how he goes and you got to remember that well, porter was sliding porter and um boots car are probably similar horsepower to andy knights anyway so it's 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 really if they make a mistake i would think that they're going to get through that he's going to get through and and pick up a podium but it doesn't look like it at this stage by the looks yeah he's not close enough i did see porter uh the second of these two cars sliding around out of uh, toyota we'll watch him exit here out of higgins but i agree with you the 50 is going to struggle he's only got two corners to go but here comes angus fogg in the ja russell limited mustang the boss mustang has done it again and that black and gold has taken another important victory for his 21 season. Didn't have the best of starts to the year, but it's now coming good, and the team know it. Well done to Angus Fogg. It's been a good weekend. He should take the weekend out, having been the most consistent, and with Knight not getting up to the podium this time. But good racing all the way through. Angus Fogg then with the victory, Craig Boot does consolidate second place. Andrew Porter takes third, and Andy Knight does go fourth, having got past Matt Spratt. Michael Wallace in sixth place, Tony Galbraith seventh, and Dean Hansen recovers to eighth. Yeah, Craig Boot's done really well on that race. You know, he's he's come from fifth to get up to second, so whether he just had a good start or, you know, a bit of racecraft, but um, yeah, it's, it's good to see him up there and get a podium finish.